Hi there. If you've watched my videos before, you've probably noticed that in the background I have some rings, segmented rings hanging. The reason for that is that when I do segmented turning, after making some rings I may have pieces left over, too small to use for anything else. So I'll make another ring up, hang it up and I can use it hopefully in the future. And now I'm going to do just that. I've taken a bunch down from up there and I want to make a bowl from them. My friend Terry is also a segmented turner and some of the work he does is just beautiful. He started embellishing a lot of them with pyrography or wood burning and he's not doing the kind of burning I do on the bottom of my vessels with my signature and the date. He's doing Celtic crosses and all kinds of beautiful work like that. It's phenomenal stuff. And he's promised me that when I go visit him in a couple of weeks, he's going to show me how to do the same thing. I'm really looking forward to that. So I've taken all these pieces down. They're birch, being light colored. The uh, wood burning should look better on it than it would on walnut or anything else. And I don't expect it to be a beautiful bowl because they're just rings that were previously made up. Not anything designed for a bowl. I'm just going to see what I can make from it. That bowl, one of the first segmented things that I did, I didn't like it after I finished it. The straight sides just didn't look bowl-like. Then I tried this one. And I got a curve here and then a reverse curve down there, kind of like an OG. And I like it much better. So anyway, I'm going to make the bowl, take it out to Terry, have him show me how to do that, and then I'll be back. And that'll be a few weeks from now, but with the magic of video editing, it's going to seem like I'm just gone just a few seconds. So this is what I've come up with for my first effort, after some guidance from my friend Terry showing me how to do pyrography. I quite like it. It's not perfect a long way from it, but then it is my first effort. One of the great things about doing this on a segmented bowl is that it's already divided into segments, into quadrants, so you can decide what you want to do and then easily center it in any of those segments. This will be my next one try to do a better job on that and I will try to give some information as I go along on how this is done. So if this interests you, stick around and let's see what I can come up with. Hopefully I won't mess it up too badly. Some of the work that Terry's done has been up in the corner here. He does beautiful work, always does, kind of disgusting really. So stick around, let's see what I can come up with. First thing I'm going to do is find an image I want to use in the pyrography. So I'm going to Google Advanced and I'm just going to look for a butterfly line drawing. And there are quite a few. If I click on images now, I can pick one of these. I like this one right here. I'll view the image. Okay, there we are. Now I'm just going to save this picture. I'm just going to save it under butterfly. Line drawing. I'm going to be using the segments that are on the top of the bowl, almost horizontal. As you can see, they're just a little over two and three quarter inches high and one and one half inches wide. I need to adjust that line drawing so that it's just a little shorter than the two and three quarter inches. Now I'm going into my file explorer. I will right click on that and I'll open it with Adobe Photoshop. Now with it open in Photoshop, I'm going to change the image size. I want it to be just a little shorter than that 2.75 inches, so I'm going to change it to 2.5. Now I will save that. I realize that not everyone has Photoshop, but pretty much any of the photo manipulation tools you have can do what I'm about to do, or at least in some sense. I'm going to paste that image in, and I'm going to put four in here. I believe I will make at least four on the four different quadrants. And if I have too many, that's fine. I'd rather have too many than too few. I'll actually print six of them. So now they're in there and I will print them out. My next step
step is going to be using spray adhesive to bond this to the back side of some carbon paper. I'll give that a few minutes to dry and then carry on. I drew vertical lines through the butterflies to help line them up on the segments. I've lined up the vertical line I drew through the center of the butterfly on one of the joints between the two segments. Now my next step will be to outline around the white areas and around the outside edge of everything. I'm colorblind, so rather than use a red pen like Terry does, I'm just going to put an X in the middle of each piece that I do to remind me where I have finished. When I get this finished, I'll come back and show you the results. Now it's time for the big reveal. You can see I've got the X's, so I believe I've got everything as far as the internal goes. And I'm fairly sure I got all the little circles and the outside. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, I believe I got it all. Now the X's will be able to be just erased, I believe, after I finish the burning. So now, next, let's take a look at the burning tools. The burning system I'm using is made by a company called Razor Tip. I picked them, first of all, because Terry's using this system, and secondly, because it's sold by Lee Valley, and I'm a big fan of Lee Valley tools. You can also buy things directly through Razor Tip online, because Lee Valley does not carry everything. At the moment, I have a large skew and a medium sized skew and if you're a turner you already understand why it's called a skew tip. I also have what's called a regular writing tip although I'm not going to use it for writing myself I'll use that for the shading. I'm waiting for a writing tip to show up hopefully tomorrow in the mail. This works very simply it's just a matter of plugging in these RCA plugs plugging them into the pen you want to use. You have a choice of two different inputs if you want to use them. It's just switching to the one you want to use. Once you turn it on, it heats up very quickly and cools very quickly when you turn it off. So now I'm going to do a little bit of what's called the outline burning and then show a little bit of the shading. I'm not going to subject you to sitting there watching the entire butterfly be done. But let's just take a look, a short look, at how it's done. I'm going to start with outlining using the medium sized skew. It's just a matter of following the line, trying when you come to an intersection of the line to not go past that. As you can see, I'm a little shaky. Now places like that where I go over the edge, I should be able to do a little bit of scraping with a scalpel and take some of that color out. This is not simple, not as easy as it should be because I'm trying to lean over 
and stay away from your view with my hand. I'm going to continue, do the rest of the outlining, and then I'll be back to show some of the shading. Now what you see took me a little over a half hour to accomplish. The hardest part actually was the circles, the small circles. They're very difficult to try to make them round. And where they're real small, you can probably tell that there are some places where it's quite dark brown because the burning kind of drifts in toward the center of it. What I want to try to do is scrape some of that color out of there. The line itself it won't scrape out because it's deep, but that does seem to work well. Taking the color out, lightening it. I'll finish doing these. And then I'll come back and do some shading. That did a nice job. It took most of that color out from where those dots should be. My next step will be what's called shading. And shading simply means to darken areas. When you look at this, you can see the dark veins, if I can call them that running between the different white areas, the body, the antenna. To do the shading, it's just a matter of touching down repeatedly between the lines. When I come close to these small dots, I'm hoping that the color won't transfer to the inside again, simply because it shouldn't cross the divide made by the skew. This is going to take quite a bit of time again. And I'll come back when this is finished, show you what it looks like and go on to the next step. And that's one of the designs finished. I'm quite pleased with it. It's only my second attempt, so I think it's come out pretty nice. Now I'm going to do another one on this side, and then I haven't decided what to put something smaller in here. And I'll come back and show you the finished product. Well, there you go. That's what I've come up with, and I'm pleased with it, considering how new I am to this pyrography. I want to thank Terry again for introducing me to this. And I hope perhaps on this introduction, a very brief one, will interest someone else out there and you can give this a try. I ended up going with just two butterflies. To be honest, they're a little too large and I didn't have enough space between them. So I put some vines in there instead. Around the outside, hindsight's always 20-20, I would have made these small flowers a little larger. But I've got a pair of daffodils and then a pair of brown Susans alternating all the way around. So I hope someone out there does get some use out of this. It's a very brief introduction as I said, but it gives you a small idea of what's going on. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. And be safe in your shop. Take care now.